Good morning and welcome to the first of our Sunday morning worship services coming to you on YouTube from Trinity Lutheran Church in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm Pastor Gary Schuske. And I'm seminarian Werner Schreuli. We're also happy to welcome Mary Brenner who's playing the piano for our service this morning. During this time, we're not able to gather together. We're delighted to do so by means of technology. We're glad that you can do that and that together uh, we can pray and sing and hear uh, the good news of Jesus Christ that means so much to each of us and especially till that day when I know we're all looking forward, we can gather again together. Uh, we'll continue to offer these Sunday services as well as our midweek Lent devotions each week on YouTube until we can gather together. It'll be our plan to have the Wednesday devotion up at six o'clock, the normal time for that event, and to have the Sunday morning service ready to go uh, by 11 o'clock, the regular worship time as well. Of course, that's pending any technical difficulties. Uh, please know that these services, as we're learning to do them, may look a little bit different over the weeks that are to come. Before we go any further, I'd like to give you just a thought or two, maybe some ways to help you prepare to worship at home. And once I give them to you, if you don't mind, you can pause the video for a moment, maybe gather some things and prepare. Uh, to start with, I recommend setting up a place where you're going to worship. Maybe set some chairs together or sit near a cross in your home. I'd encourage you to gather your loved ones that are in your home at the moment to worship together and to do that as a, as a family activity. Uh, perhaps find a candle and light a candle is a very normal thing we do so appropriate today as our gospel from John 9 talks about the light of the world. I also encourage you uh, to have your Bible handy so that you could look up the Bible passages and follow along uh, as we prepare. And especially today, if you wanted to pause and look up John chapter 9, uh, that would be great for following along uh, during the sermon. And then I'll say to you what I would say to you if you're here in the room. It's a blessing in worship if you participate. So stand and sit and sing and pray and speak and do that joyfully together. With that in our hearts and minds now, we're going to take a moment of reflection as we hear a prelude preparing our hearts now for worship. begin our service now with our time of confession and absolution, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment now in silent reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and all, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear the Old Testament as it is written in the 42nd chapter of Isaiah, starting at the 14th verse. I say that again, Josiah 42, verse, verse 14 to 21. For a long time I have held my peace, I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, You are God. You are our gods. Israel's failure to hear and see. Hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see. Who is blind but who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? He sees many things but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness sake, to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here also the epistle reading as it is found in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, starting at the eighth verse. Ephesians 5, verse 8 to 14. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. 
Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when everything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand now for the reading of the Holy Gospel from John, the ninth chapter, selected verses. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with saliva, and then he anointed the man's eyes with mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who has formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him, How have we received his sight? And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they asked him again, the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered him, you were born in utter sin, and you would teach us, and they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and it is he speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees heard him near him, heard these things, and said to him, Are we also blind? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now you say, We see your guilt remains. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together now singing our sermon hymn, which is the beautiful and beloved hymn, Amazing Grace. We invite you please to sing along at home as well.
increasing grace shall then prevail in heaven's joy and peace. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Our text for this morning on this fourth Sunday in the season of Lent is the Gospel reading from John, the ninth chapter, read a few moments ago. Dear friends, it is the oldest question that has ever been asked, and you all have asked it as well. When I think of this question, actually, I think of my dear niece, a beautiful and brilliant young woman today, but when she was a two-year-old, she was a handful. Moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, you're going to understand when I say to you, every other word out of her mouth was the word, why? Why is the sunset pink? Why does ice cream melt? Why can't I have some more ice cream? Why can't I play in the street? Why do I have to take a bath? Why do I have to go to bed? Why do I have to go back to bed? Why, why, why? My friends, I can assure you that this old question brought forth the oldest answer ever written. It doesn't matter what your language or what your culture. Every culture has some way to say these words. In American English, we say, because I said so. And folks, I wish I could see you out there to watch you nod your heads. Maybe you've even been saying, I said so, a little bit extra these last few days as your kids have been home more than usual. The ancient question, why? Dear friends, that is what John chapter 9 talks about today, and what a blessing it is for us because I know that all of us have been asking why recently. As we're dealing with coronavirus and all the uncertainty that that is bringing to us, as we're dealing with trying to carry on normal life while being home a lot more, as our futures just seem uncertain, we're asking the question, why? And I dare say we're going to do that some more in the future. With that question on our hearts, then, let's dig into the Word of God, chapter 9 of John, where it talks a bit about why. Here's the story. Jesus, <clears throat> pardon me, and his disciples were traveling around, and they arrived one day at a place where they found a man who was born blind. Now imagine, this man has never seen. And listen to the question of the disciples. Rabbi, they say, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Now, do you notice what they ask? They don't actually ask the question, but underneath it somewhere is, why is this man born blind? Now, friends, we sometimes ask the question the same way that those disciples did that day. When something goes wrong, when we suffer, when someone we care about suffers, sometimes we ask the simple question, why? But I think it's really a question of trying to understand the world first. If I can find a reason why you are suffering, then maybe I can understand it. Dear friends, please remember, trying to find out why someone is hurting is not usually the answer. People don't want you to find out why. They simply want you to be compassionate, to care for them in their time of need. Other times, I think that we all cry out why from the depths of the real feeling in our hearts and our minds. We go through a time of suffering or a loved one is hurting and we can't help them and we cry out, why God? But what we're really saying is, Lord, I'm hurting. My loved one is hurting. Lord, I wish I could do more for them. Lord, please help. 
That, my friends, is a deep, deep prayer from our hearts. Maybe you've been praying that recently, and I dare say we all will do so in the days ahead. Please remember, when you're praying why to God, seeking his help, you're still always praying the right direction. You know, sometimes I think it goes a bit wrong. Sometimes we pray to God, why? And actually we get a tone of accusing, why, God, did you do that? Why are you letting that happen? Almost as if suddenly we have become God and now he needs to defend himself to us and explain his actions. Notice how strange and backward that is. When we call out why, we are calling out from the depths of our heart, from the problems that we are facing that day. But maybe the question we need to ask today is not, why are we suffering? But instead, what about this question? Why did Jesus need to come here to suffer? Why is there a cross here in our sanctuary and sanctuaries all over the world? I think the answer is simple. At least sometimes I try to make it more simple. Maybe you do too. Maybe you look out there at your world, and I do that in my selflessness, to see people that I imagine, well, they're worse than I am. They are the reason that Jesus needed to come. But dear friends, if I look honestly in the mirror, I'll have to admit that I am the one who has been walking in the darkness. I am the one who wants to live my life the way that I want to because I want to say so. I am the one that needs the spiritual healing and the rescue that Jesus alone can give. Dear friends, what is God's answer to our suffering? God's answer is right here in chapter 9. Don't miss it. Jesus Christ is walking on earth. This is one of seven signs, seven miracles in John's gospel. In a little while, I'm going to talk to you about that some more. In this sign and giving back this man his sight, we see who Jesus is, true God and true man. Jesus says that to us. The question is not who sinned, this man or his parents, because the answer is neither. Why was this man born blind? So we could see the work of God in and through him. So Jesus does something wonderful. Don't you love this part of the story? He spits in the dirt. My mom would never have wanted me to spit in the dirt. Anointing his eyes, he goes and washes, and now he sees. And I want you to think about that. One of the very first things he saw was Jesus Christ face to face. Jesus is God's answer to our suffering. He came here to this earth, not above all the struggle, but right here in the muck and the mire and the mud and the brokenness of our lives. Jesus came to comfort us, to care for the grieving, to give peace to those that were uncertain. And he did that all the way in to Jerusalem. Did you ever notice, even when Jesus was on the cross, he also cried out a very familiar question, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? With his eyes on you and me, Jesus gave up his life and died. Three days later, thanks be to God, God the Father raised his son to new life. There is God's answer, a new life, a new victory, the promise that he's always at work in us and the certainty that he gives us today, the forgiveness of our sins, that we belong to him forever, that nothing in our world and nothing in our lives can ever separate us from him. Now, what does that mean in March of 2020 when so much in our lives is going around and around? I want to give you just a few thoughts about our suffering. First of all, remember, when we suffer and yet trust in God, it is one of the loudest statements of our faith. Be honest. Dear friends, it's easy to believe in Jesus Christ when things are going well, but what about in those times when it just doesn't make sense or maybe in those moments when it hurts? It is our loudest witness to the world and also our loudest witness to ourselves. Second, we have the certainty that suffering is not something we go through alone. 
Why do you think we all love the words of Psalm 23 so much? Because we are promised as we walk in the shadow, the valley of death, we do not do so alone because he is there to guide us, to protect us, to comfort us, to bring us home. It's so important that we remember, dear friends, we do not hold on to Jesus. He holds on to us. One more thing about suffering. Suffering is something that can move us to action. And that's something I want to ask you all to think about at home and in these days and weeks ahead. Three simple things I want to place before you. First of all, recently, my friends, the words of an old hymn have been going through my mind. The simple words, for such a time as this. For such a time as this. And I want to ask you in the honest prayers of your life this week, talk to God. Talk to God maybe about some unique gift or talent that you have. Maybe some unique experience, maybe even a painful experience that you have gone through that might enable you to care for others at such a time as this. At a time when it's hard for us to gather, at a time when we feel so isolated, please remember that the coronavirus cannot keep us from caring for one another. God has blessed us for such a time as this. And one more thing I'd like to encourage you to do at home. And I'm not surprising you at all when I say this to you. A few weeks ago, remember a few weeks ago we gathered here in church, we began a short journey through the Gospel of John. And I asked you to consider reading the Gospel of John. I'd like to say that to you again. I'm going to start that myself tomorrow as well, making a journey through John. And as we do that, remember that in the Gospel of John, there are seven miracles. John calls them seven signs. And certainly, yes, one of them is healing the man that was born blind. As you look at those seven signs, those seven miracles, each one of them tells you something about Jesus Christ about how much he loves you, about the fact that he came here to this earth for you and for me. I'd like to leave us all just with one more thought about this idea of why and suffering. I want to read to you a verse from a beloved hymn. If you have a, a Lutheran service book, it happens to be hymn number 708. <clears throat> I'm going to read just the third verse to you, uh, but I'd encourage you maybe to make this a, a thing for devotion sometime in the next day or so. Listen to the ultimate promise we have and never forget a day is coming and coming soon where there'll never ever be suffering again. Lord, thee I love with all my heart, verse 3. Lord, let at last thine angels come to Abram's bosom, bear me home, that I may die unfearing, and in its narrow chamber keep my body safe in peaceful sleep until thy reappearing. And then from death awaken me that these mine eyes with joy may see. O Son of God, thy glorious face my Savior and my font of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer attend, my prayer attend, and I will praise thee without end. That is our hope. I do want to share one more thought with all of you today as a way to look after each other. I think many of you know that I spent 18 years in Central Florida, and during that time, I lived through five hurricanes coming over our home, right over my house. In fact, two of them damaged my roof. During that time, they talked to us about something called hurricane fatigue, a very tough reality that says you're living at a time when your fight or flight mechanism is at the highest and it just stays there day after day. And I think that that's something we're all going through now with the coronavirus. What do I want to ask you to do? Give yourself a break. Give others in your life a break. In this time when perhaps the stress is feeling great, I encourage you to go take a few moments of rest, be in prayer, be in the scriptures, find some time to laugh with your family. Give yourself a break during this time and know that Jesus Christ holds on to us forever and ever. And one day we will see him face to face. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand now as we want to join together confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We go to God in prayer. Let us pray together. Blessed Lord, you give sight to the blind, you open the ears of the deaf, and you make the lame walk. Hear the prayers of your people on behalf of all people as they have need. In the darkness of sin and death, we cry to you, O Lord, open our ears by your word, our minds by your spirit, and our hearts by your grace that we may know and be thankful for all the blessings you have given to us in Christ, our Lord, especially the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Strengthen us in faith that we may serve you with all our body, mind, soul, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Because you told us to, we pray to you on behalf of your church and all your people in every place. Give us good pastors and servants of your word who will preach your word and serve us with your sacraments. Raise up many more to serve as church workers and bless those who are now preparing for full-time church work. We pray for our mission partners in the U.S. and all around the world. We pray today for the pastors and members of Christ Lutheran Church in Brooksville, Florida and New City Lutheran Church in Orlando, Florida. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As your church, which cannot come together in this time, let us remember that we are still part of your church, which is, which is not just some empty building, but your living body. God, wherever we may be and wherever we are, give that we may help those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Knowing your healing gifts will knowing your healing will and gifts, we pray to you, O Lord, to remember the sick in their afflictions, to calm those troubled in mind, and to keep steadfast the dying. Especially for those whose life ha- lives have been impacted by the coronavirus, we ask for your healing grace on those who are sick and for your protection upon all of us, especially the aged and those with pre-existing conditions, as they are the most threatened by this virus. Be with those who are quarantined and those that are traveling. Father, we ask that you would grant safety and wisdom to all those working in healthcare. Grant your wisdom to all those in government and public health as they seek to care for us. Guide guide us at this and all times to trust in you, our ultimate source of protection and hope. But not only those, Lord, we ask that you be with all who are sick and suffering. We pray especially for Sunanda, Susanna, Myra, Diane, Larry, Deidre, Ray, Helena, Barbara, and Maria. Be also with all those we will mention in our hearts now.
Show us your gracious will, O Lord, and sustain those who are afflicted in body or mind until the day when you will bestow upon us new bodies fit for the eternal life you have prepared for us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Teach our hearts to be content with your will and to trust that you will answer us with what is best for us and at the right time for our need. So we pray, giving testimony of our, conf of our confidence in your gracious favour in Christ by answering with one voice. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As is tradition here, we will now take a time to share the peace with each other wherever you may be, with smiles or if you are in close communion with handshakes as well, if you are still there. And yeah, just give that down. I'm going to do it here. Peace to the Lord. Peace of the Lord with you. <laughs> and peace to the Lord be with you <laughs> as well. And instead of an offering, we will today ask that everyone, wherever they are, just take a moment and just reflect. We will now continue with the benediction. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. For our final hymn today, we sing the hymn we know as the doxology. If you have a hymnal, that's number 805. Friends, once again, this time that we're not able to gather together, I want to remind all of us that this does not keep us from caring for one another. 
I thank you for your prayers. We're also praying for all of you. <clears throat> Do not hesitate, though, to reach out to us. You can find contact information for Trinity Lutheran Church at trinity-lutheran.de. Again, trinity-lutheran.de on the web. Uh, feel free to contact us and know that we are praying for you. So now we end our service as we always do. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. We wish you a very blessed day.